Hi everybody, welcome back to Real Estate Investing Adventures. Why? Because real estate is fun and it always should be an adventure. If you're a return guest, I appreciate you coming back. If you're new, who the heck am I? My name's Joe Jurak and I'm a real estate investor. I travel all over the country and work with people just like you to get started in real estate or take their real estate to the next level. In this series, what am I doing? I'm traveling again. Where am I at this week in the adventure series? I'm in the state of Florida. But what city am I in? I'm in Winter Park, Florida, and I'm gonna take you on this weekly adventure. We're gonna go out there and our expedition and exploration is gonna cover houses everywhere throughout. So I'm gonna try to include as many golden nuggets as I can for you in this week's adventure series in Winter Park, Florida. So get ready, grab a notepad, here we go. Hi everybody, here I am at another new construction project. I tell you, there's new construction all over Florida and in Winter Park, I see properties popping up like this kind of everywhere. So as you're looking at an area, look to see what type of uh, remodeling, renovation, rehab and construction is going on. But I'm telling you right now in Florida, I have never ever seen development like this in more than 20 years. Things are popping up everywhere. Hi everybody, here I am at another new construction. That's the thing about the Winter Park area. People look for big lots, they knock down the property, and then they put up a bigger home. So as you drive the area, look at what's going on. How many houses are for sale? How does curb appeal look? Are they putting up new construction such as this? As you drive the area, you're gonna notice other things too. One house may be one price, but then you go a block or two down and it's on water on a lake and the price is gonna go way up. So make sure you understand everything in the area, make sure you drive the neighborhood, and if you can't find a deal, maybe you need to build a deal. Hi, I was driving in the area and here's another little beauty that they just built. My opinion, when you're looking at a property in a given neighborhood, drive the area, see what else is for sale. Is it brand new construction or is it rehabbed properties? When you're in a market that you have a lot of properties and a lot of them are newer construction, your rehab houses may not sell for as much because most people may take the brand new construction over the property that just has been rehabbed. So drive the area, look to see what's there. And I went around this house, I wanna tell you it's a little beauty, so it's tough competition here in the area, but you can do it if you know who you're going up against when you find, fix, flip houses, you get rentals, or you do wholesaling, no matter the strategy you're doing out there, know what's happening in your market. I'm in Winter Park, Florida, and I'm looking at this single family home that was listed as a single family home, but here's the thing. Even though it was listed as a single family home, it's in a complex, so it's more like a townhome. There's other townhomes in the complex, other properties in the complex, but even though it is a detached single family home, it is in another complex. Now here's part of the issue. It doesn't really have a big yard. It doesn't have a garage. It doesn't have a driveway. Can that really impact the value, the desirability of the property? It sure can. So here we are on the side of the property. I'm taking a look. The side looks okay. The roofing looks okay. Not too bad. But as I walk the property, I wanna get a good look at the roof to determine is it in good shape? Are there any missing shingles? Are there any shingles curling? How do the windows look? How does the landscaping look? How big is the lot? So always take a walk around the property and walk away from it a little farther to get a better perspective looking at it from a little farther. And then note things that you like about the property and you don't like about the property. This house is actually behind another house. So it is kind of private, but yet it's kind of tucked away in its own little corner. Some people may like that, some people may not. On this side of the property here, we have a little yard area with a fence. It is enclosed, it does have a patio, but see how close all your neighbors are? 
So you got to make sure you have a private little area that they do have, but unfortunately the yard isn't that big. So if somebody has pets or a family, they may not like it because they don't really have as much space, but at least the area is private. Taking a look at this property, it's a nice little home, three bedroom, two bath home. And in this home, it is dated a little bit. As I go through this property, I'm taking a look and there's different things here as I look and the kitchen, when we take a look at the kitchen, we have a dated refrigerator, okay? Over here we have a dated refrigerator, we have a dated stove, it is a galley style kitchen, little eating area, nice open concept, but with the pantry that we have over here, you could possibly open this up. As I come through the house, what am I taking a look at here? We have laundry, we have a bathroom, we have a couple of bedrooms on this side. So it's not a bad little property. The problem is you gotta get it the right price. The price that it's at right now, there's no room unless you're an owner occupant. So as you come through and take a look at these properties, you really gotta understand what makes a good rental, what makes a good flip. And me taking a look at this, unless I got it at a good price, I'm really not gonna be interested in it. So make sure you know what your properties today. It is a little bit of a rainy day, but the rain will not stop us today. Why is that? because real estate investing is fun and it should always be an adventure. Hey everybody, this is Joe Jurek. I'm traveling to that next property. What I wanna tell you is make sure you route out the property so they're close. Don't go all over town and drive 10 miles apart. The more properties you can look at in a given area, the better off you are. Here's another tip. When you look at comps in the area to see what properties are worth, write down the other addresses of properties that have sold. Why is that? Because then you could drive by and see what it looks like. So you know the competition. Based on what the other properties have sold for, are they really the same property? Same style of house? Do they have the same size garage? Do they have a swimming pool? You know, what are the amenities or things that it has that would make it comparable to the property you have. Because just looking at the figures online or on paper may not tell you the whole story of the house. So by being able to take a look at the properties in person, it really gives you a better feel of what your competition looks like. Lastly, I also look at other properties that are listed in the neighborhood because I wanna know what potential buyers are gonna be looking at. As they look at my property, maybe they're gonna go ahead and look at other properties and then determine what they like, the features, the property, the price. So I wanna know what my competition is currently on the market. I also wanna know what the competition was of properties that have sold. It also gives me a good idea of the type of materials and conditions of the property. Like are they using new appliances that are stainless steel? Are they doing granite in the kitchen? Or are they just doing a regular type of uh, improvement? So when I list my property, I'm just as good or better than the competition, but I don't over or under improve it. When I take a look at this townhome over here, it wasn't a bad townhome, but it was overpriced. They had some leakage in the ceiling, the kitchen, bathrooms were dated, flooring was dated, a lot of work in there. So as you're looking at properties, what will a certain amount of money buy? Sometimes when you're looking at a property, you wanna make sure you compare and contrast different things in the area. As I look over here, you can see the other unit adjoining to it. You have a common area roofing. So part of the issue here is if you buy this unit, you got to get real friendly with the neighbors because if you do a roof, which is probably going to need pretty soon, you wonder if the neighbors are going to do it too. Now, unfortunately, the roofing next door is a lot older than our roofing here. So you got to look at all these things when you're factoring it into a neighborhood as to how easy will it be to do the rehab. The nice thing about this property, it does have a driveway, it does have a garage, there is parking across the street. So it has some nice features that other properties don't have, but you got to know your buyer. You got to know what the end buyer is going to want, whether you're wholesaling out or whether you're dealing and doing a fix or flip. So make sure you take in everything into consideration when you're looking at these properties so you get the best deal possible. Okay, everybody, I'm going to see another property. Let's get rolling in the Suburban and see what we find. Hopefully, better deals than what we've seen already. I'm taking a look at another property here in the Winter Park area. It's fairly close to I-4 and close to the amenities offered here in Winter Park. It is a smaller, older home, two bedroom, one bath, 
But the thing is, it's close to things that people want to be close to, like the downtown area, as well as other amenities. There are some nicer, bigger homes as we go farther down. So it appears to be uh, a neighborhood that is pretty solid, solid rental, solid flips. So uh, I'm gonna run in and take a look at it. Hi everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this week's adventure in the Winter Park, Florida area. What I wanna tell you is one last golden nugget. As you're looking at an area, make sure you gather as much information on that area as you can. How many houses are on the market, how quick those houses are selling, how close they're selling to the asking price, the original asking price, and you also want to know how many total houses are on the market at any given point in time. The more houses on the market, usually the longer they could take to sell and they could sell at a reduced price. The less inventory on the market, usually the quicker they're gonna sell at closer to the asking price. So make sure you come back, watch all the other weekly adventures and get caught up on my YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you go out there, click the subscribe button and be sure to subscribe because every week we're gonna be on another expedition, exploration, and maybe might even be in a city near you. So go live life in the moment with no regrets. Take care, believe and achieve. Bye-bye. Do it now. Believe and achieve. Take care.